Today we are going to start the Cambridge Chemistry 0971 or 0620 syllabus. The content overview here, we have 12 topics. Topic number one, states of matter. So today we are going to start with topic number one, states of matter. These are the subtopics for states of matter, solids, liquids and gases the kinetic particle theory of matter, changes of state, the effects of temperature and pressure on the volume of a gas, and diffusion. These are the learning objectives that should be covered in topic number one. 1 1.1 solids, liquids, and gases. 1.2 the kinetic particle theory of matter. Okay, solids, liquids, and gases. Before we learn about the solids, liquids, and gases, let's recall what we know about matter. What is matter? What's the definition of matter? Matter is all. All what? All the substances, all the materials from which the universe is composed. So matter all substances and materials from which the universe is composed. In other words, we can say matter is anything that has mass and volume. What's the definition of mass? What's the definition of volume? Mass is the amount. Amount of what? Amount of material in a substance. Volume is the amount of space taken by an object. So matter is anything that has mass and volume, that has amount of material and amount of space. Matter is made of tiny particles. Matter is categorized into three states. So we have three states of matter. What is another word of states? Three phases of matter. You should know both words. So how many states of matter exist? Three states of matter or three phases of matter. Example, let's take water as an example. Water can exist as a solid as a liquid, as a gas. Solid is ice, the liquid is liquid water, and the gas is water vapor. So three states or three phases of matter. Let's compare between the three states of matter, the solids, the liquids, and gases. In terms of arrangement of particles. How the particles in the solid are being arranged. The solid particles are closely packed. Closely packed, or in other words, they are arranged in a regular manner. We call this crystalline lattice. So how do we draw the solid particles? They should be in a regular pattern and they should be very close to each others and the circles we are drawing that represent the particles should be the same size. So this is the arrangement of particles in the solid state. What about the liquid state? Liquids are touching. Are they in a regular manner? No, they have something called random distribution. So how to draw the liquid particles? We draw it this way. We should show that the liquid particles are touching, but they are arranged in a random distribution, not a regular pattern. What about the particles in the gaseous state? The particles are very far 
apart from each others we can say they are totally randomly distributed so the particles are very far apart from each others what about the shape and volume of solids liquids and gases is the shape fixed in other words is it a definite shape regarding the solids yes the solids have definite shape and definite volume and this is an example of the crystalline lattice structure so definite shape and definite volume what about the liquids do they have fixed or definite shape no they do not what about the volume the volume is fixed why don't they have a definite shape because liquids take the shape of their container for example if we have 100 milli of liquid water we pour it into a conical flask then we pour it into a graduated cylinder then we pour it into a beaker for example so the volume is fixed but is the shape fixed or definite no the liquid take the shape of the container what about the gases the gases don't have a definite shape or a definite volume intermolecular spaces and intermolecular forces we said that the solid particles are closely packed to each other so what about the intermolecular spaces do they have intermolecular spaces we can say that the spaces are negligible what about the intermolecular forces they are closely packed so this means the forces are very strong what about the liquids the liquids intermolecular spaces are what we said they are touching so the intermolecular spaces are very small what about the gases that are very far apart from each others so the space between the particles is very large what about the forces between the liquid particles the forces are weaker because the spaces are very small and regarding the gases we can say no forces of attraction or we can say very 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 weak forces of attraction in between the particles regarding compression which state of matter can be compressed of course the gases why because the particles are very far apart from each other so easy to be compressed what about the liquids the liquids are hardly compressible and the solids cannot be compressed regarding the movement of particles what about the movement of particles in the solids the solid particles vibrate about a fixed position so the keyword here is vibrate or vibration what about the liquid particles the liquid particles slide over each others slide over each others and the gas particles they are free to move in all directions as we know the particles are very far apart from each others what about the energy energy in solids liquids and gases which state of matter has the highest amount of energy of course the gases they have the highest amount of energy 
the liquids they have less amount of energy so both the liquids and gases have more energy than the solids so have more energy than the solids The kinetic particle theory of matter means what? Means how matter behaves. So we are going to study the behavior of the particles of solids, liquids, and gases. What does the word kinetic mean? Kinetic means motion or movement. So this theory explains what this theory explains the physical properties which is the behavior of matter in terms of the movement of particles so kinetic particle theory again the kinetic particle theory is how matter behaves behavior is the physical properties of matter in terms of what we said kinetic in terms of the movement of what of the particles so the definition of the theory is from its name explains the behavior or the physical properties of matter in terms of movement of the particles okay what happens to the solid when it is heated this is a solid and it is heated what happens to the particles? The particles vibrate faster about a fixed position, so they vibrate faster. Then, what happens to the solid? Vibrate faster. What happens to the size or the volume of the solid? The volume of the solid increases, or in other words, we can say expands, expansion. Again, when the solid particles are heated, the particles vibrate more about a fixed position, vibrate more so they move farther apart from each other, so the solid expands. So, after the solid expands, when it gains sufficient amount of energy, what happens? They overcome the forces of attraction that holds them together, so they can move out of their fixed position so they can move here out of their fixed position so what happens to the particles here they can what they can slide over each others in a continuous random motion so when this happens what happens to the solid the solid melts turns into a liquid okay the particles of the liquid they are moving randomly what will happen if they gain more energy so when the liquid particles they gain more energy they overcome the forces that hold them together and they escape from the liquid surface and move around in a continuous rapid random motion then this is the boiling of the liquid then the vapor is formed and particles are moving in all directions so we have the gaseous state again the kinetic particle theory explains how the particles behave in terms of movement so here when the solid particles they gain energy 
the particles of the solid, they vibrate faster about their fixed position. What happens to the volume of the solid? The solid expands, increase in size. Then, applying more heat, they move out of their fixed position, they slide past each other's, the liquid melts by this, so then after this, the liquid is heated up, continuous random motion, boiling, we get the gaseous state, and this is the kinetic particle theory. So what are the main points of this theory? The main points of this theory is that matter is made up of tiny moving particles. Are they visible to your eye? They are invisible to your eye. Point number two, different substances have different types of particles. Point number three, the particles move all the time. Point number four, if the temperature increases, in other words, the higher the temperature, what happens to the motion or the movement of the particles? As we saw here, as the temperature increases, the particles move faster. So as the temperature increases, the movement increase as well, they move faster. What about if we compare heavier particles to lighter particles? Which particles move fast or which particles move slowly? Heavier particles, they move more slowly than the lighter particles at a given temperature. We use the kinetic particle theory to explain. To explain what? To explain the states of matter. According to the motion of particles, we can categorize the matter into solids, liquids, and gases. We also explain the differences in properties as we discussed in the table and we also explain the changes of state and we will discuss in details later in the coming lesson so again what are the main points of this theory matter is composed of tiny particles. These tiny particles are moving. Are they visible? No, they are invisible. Different substances have different types of particles. Particles move all the time. As the temperature increases, the movement of particles increase. Heavier particles move slowly than the lighter particles. By using the kinetic particle theory, we can explain the states of matter, the differences in their properties, and the changes of states. Now let's discuss some important points regarding this topic. Shape and volume of solids may be affected by changes in temperature. According to the kinetic particle theory, what happens to the shape and the volume of the solids? When the temperature increases, what happens when the solid is heated? There is a slight increase in size. What do we call this? Expansion. When the solid is cooled. Cooled. 
what happens to the size of the solids the size decreases slightly and this is called contraction how to relate this to a real life example this picture shows expansion gaps what if these rails do not have expansion gaps the track would buckle in hot weather because what happens to the particles in hot weather the solid particles increase slightly in size and this causes expansion that and that explains the expansion gaps another real life example about the expansion is the thermometer if we look at the thermometer this thermometer has liquid mercury inside it how does the thermometer work the volume of the liquid inside the thermometer is slightly affected by changes in temperature so here the liquids volume is slightly affected by changes in temperature what happens to the volume of the liquid here the volume expands and this is how the thermometer works so if you are having fever the temperature increase will cause the liquid particles to expand and the level of the mercury will rise another example of expansion that the volume of the gas is affected greatly by the changes in temperature as well by this we are done with subtopic 1.1 solids liquids and gases and subtopic uh, 1.2 uh, the kinetic particle theory of matter hope this session was uh, beneficial thank you so much